Good evening. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming very much. Appreciate it. Um, going to get started as soon as I can. Uh, we're live streaming tonight. We're trying to connect up with a board in, in Thunder Bay. They don't have access to PD for this kind of stuff, so they asked that we could do that. And so it, it shouldn't really impact what you're doing tonight at all, but just know that it's being sent to them. It's not being recorded. It's just being sent to them. It is being recorded. recorded. It is being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't no, want no, to no, do no, no. just do this when you walk in front of the camera. But I'll uh, edit that part out after. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what I just said. Thank you. But I don't sound too dumb. Uh, there's two types of Sphero. Well, there's more than two, but there's two types that you'll have access to. Thank you so much. Um, these are the new ones that were sent out. And I just need to explain the difference. Uh, the easiest way to denote the difference is this one has a blue stripe, this one has a white stripe, but a little bit deeper if you have a different model. These are called the Spark Plus. They're brand new. There's some advantages to them and disadvantages to them. So it's not the end of the world if those are the only type you have, but they're a little different than the traditional ones. So some of the stuff in the workshop, I was quickly scrambling to change just to make sure I'm, I'm meeting everybody's needs. So there are kind of two streams to what we're doing tonight. Some information about how to connect with Tickle and some information about how to connect with Lightning Lab. You can use both types of spheros with Lightning Lab, but you cannot use the brand new spheros with Tickle. Tickle is very primary friendly. There's a lot of different ways it can be used. Lightning Lab can be brought down pretty low, but it, it, it's just, it'll be slightly more challenging, but we'll walk you through that process tonight. If that sounds really horrible to you, um, that you've got kind of the wrong one or something, we can talk about that. If you have more junior students, it's not a disadvantage to have the older one. Thank you. Nope, that's yours. I'll take it. That's mine, right? Okay, uh, charging a sphere also while I'm on topic, I don't know if this is in the slideshow, I can't remember, but I usually don't do too much with the slideshow, I just kind of get you doing stuff. Uh, if your Sphero doesn't go in the charging port properly, it won't charge. So you can see through these, which is nice, but with the older ones, I always have the kids place it on the table and it will find its heavy point. Once you put it on the table, lift it, put it on the charging port, and it will always charge. Because there's a lot of times where the kids don't put them on properly, or even teachers, and they go to get it the next day instead. So just a little from using them a lot. Okay, uh, this is Megan Lowe. Megan does a lot of stuff with Spiro and coding, and she is co-presenting tonight, or this is her first time doing a workshop, so she's co-presenting but she'll be running it soon. Okay. Um, okay, so has anyone never heard of Sphero and never seen it before? Okay, then this is kind of your slide. Sphero is a small robotic ball that gives block coding, and if you use Lightning Lab, you can even, if you're in grade eight, uh, grade seven, eight, anyone grade seven, eight here? Okay, so you can move right into, it's all based on an actual scripted language. It's based off of uh, C. So you can use that and you can actually have them move into typing in lines of code and do the whole thing. It doesn't have to remain blocked. <coughs> you can switch it over to Lightning Lab. So there's a lot of advantages to that. They've just updated Lightning Lab. It's a lot better than it was last year. Like, huge changes. Um, block coding is a visual program. It's easy for children as young as kindergarten. I've run workshops with kindergarten students and they were successfully using Tickle. The key is for them to understand what the blocks say. Once they can understand what it says, they have absolutely no fear or limitations in getting and using it. Um, so, and it says here, why should we use Roblox and coding? We can talk about that at the end if you want to come back to that, like the pedagogy or how it connects to curriculum more. We can certainly do that later. I think if we just kind of get our feet wet sooner rather than later, we'll get more done tonight. That's okay. Okay, so connecting to a spiral, uh, what we're going to do in a second is we're going to connect. Um, with the older spirals, which I'm going to call the 2.0s, with the 2.0 Sphero, you double tap to wake it, and then right here on the screen, to find this slideshow, if you type in on a browser, if you want to follow along with it, it's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, forward slash Sphero Rolls. So, and you can do it with a lower, uh, an uppercase S. If you're in this board, you can do a lowercase S. That was the original, and then I changed it to an uppercase S so that the other people can follow along as well. So if you want the access to the slideshow later, that's the link. Okay, 
So to connect, you have to go to Bluetooth. When you double tap a Sphero, it will show you three colors. Of course, if you've used them at all, sometimes they don't light up. So blue, purple, green. So it's the first letter of each color that it will show up. If you have students using more than one in a class, once you get six or seven going, it can be really, you, okay, you've done this. So they really have to know what they are based on the first letters of each of the <coughs> colors. If you have a, a Spark Plus, the new Spiros, ignore everything I'm saying because that's no longer an issue and I'll show you connecting in just a second. Okay, so with 2.0s, you connect on an iPad or a phone, you can connect. Uh, on a tablet, you or on a um, Chromebook, you can connect, but only with Lightning Lab. There is no Tickle app for the Chromebooks. So you can connect. We'll just move on to how to do it with Lightning Lab, and then we'll kind of get everyone connected to the Sphero and, and try a couple of things. Just a little heads up for using the older Spiros. When you disconnect the Spiro, I suggest you go in to the Bluetooth, tap on it, and say forget this device. If you don't tap on forget this device, the Spiros are kind of a, a one, a single use device. That's how they started out, like more sold in education. Um, they moved into the education market. The newer one is a little different, but the older ones, if you don't forget the device in Bluetooth, it's very difficult to get it to pair with another iPad. It, it doesn't want to connect with the new iPad. If you forget the device on the iPad, it kind of releases that connection properly, and then the Sphero much, much easier will pair with the next iPad that you try to do. Is that for the 2.0 or the Spark? 2.0. Okay. And so, like, if you go to purchase more Spheros for your school, if you decide, hey, this is pretty awesome, I see lots of good connections here, and you want to purchase more, you might end up getting 2.0s. And, and that might be advantageous, because then you could use Tickle, and you could do stuff more primary, and it, so like both scenarios could end up working. Plus the uh, the newer ones, I have a feeling that uh, over time there's going to be more like Tickle will probably work with the newer ones. Right. Tickle app. Okay. So getting the Tickle app, this slide was up last year before it's now on our board image, our system image. If you haven't updated your iPads though, uh, that's just a link to go get the Tickle app. You don't want kids looking this one up. If, if you search up Tickle or app on the, on the App Store, it's, it's really not something you want to uh, find. I'll leave it at that because we're live, live streaming. So. Yeah. Alright, so in Tickle, if you get this uh, update available, just X out of that. You don't need the update to work with anything that you're doing. And um, just let, leave that for now. I wouldn't recommend uh, doing that and just leave it how it is. And then you choose new project and select Spiro as the robot you want to use. Um, first block, so uh, at this point, if you have a Spark Plus, and how many people have a Spark Plus? Okay, so I will skip ahead and show you how to do that. that I could talk about all the blocks, but if somebody is connected, maybe we'll do this. So Lightning Lab, if you have Spark Plus, this is what you want to use. There's links here to the iOS version and the Chrome Web Store version. The Chrome Web Store version works really well on, an on a Chromebook. It's basically the Android app working on your Chromebook. It downloads, so it isn't dependent on Wi-Fi, except for the fact that the projects are saved in the cloud. The advantage of Lightning Lab is when you work on your phone or you work on anything that you log into, you can come back to it and you can access your programs that you put in. So that's, that's a new thing that's kind of nice. Um, so, Lightning Lab, let's go ahead and grab Lightning Lab. If you don't have it currently, you can download it, and that way we can connect to the Spark Pluses and we can kind of get rolling. Can I ask a question on the Chromebook? It wants you to sign in. What's that? It wants you to sign in. Yes. Yeah. So, right, but I didn't so know. sign up and just put in like a, a username and, and a password. I tried that and it says now. Yeah. Really? <laughs> okay, I shouldn't say that. Um, do you have like a lab already? Perfect. I the only I want to be connected because <laughs> I have I'm primary. Yeah, and that's the only I know how to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you want to? So you're really like, okay. 
<laughs> I figured because I was like I was going, I was looking online and I figured that yeah. yeah, Tickle's working on it, but they wouldn't give me an answer as to when or how. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's a primary. They said it's very important to them and that they understand that issue right now. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we can use Lightning Lab in primary level grade two. Yeah, I'm grade three. Yeah. My grade three is going to do it. I figured what they had Tickle. So no, no. Lightning Lab's changed last year. I would have recommended it. Okay. Now we have a couple of little tips and tricks. I think we can do some stuff that right. can help the kids. So Okay. Okay. Um, can you find lightning level here? Yeah. Okay. If you have an older version, you want to update. You don't want the older version. I have a couple of us truck pluses if yours is dead, so that you can work with it if you want. Yes. Uh, sorry. Question is, um, so right now this is my personal iPad and this one is connected to it. The other one is connected to my phone. Yes. How do I, whenever I, can I how do I unbluetooth? Like, oh, when it disconnects, it, this, you no longer have to forget the buttons because this has changed. So this is no longer that, okay, now I have trouble for something else because it's the new, the new Bluetooth uh, 4.1 or whatever it is going to now. It's, it's kind of smart connected. It connects in the lab and disconnects. You don't have to connect this to and if I want to the Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, how many people are grade one to th kindergarten to three? I should say kindergarten to grade three. Okay, good. That lets me know where. I'm. And how many people are upper grades beyond that? Grade seven, eight, or lower? Six. Five, six. Five, six. Okay, perfect. So we're going to try to tailor to where we're all going to be playing. All right. So real quickly, um, in Lightning Lab, you can create a class in Lightning Lab, so what you can do is you can give your students sign-ons. I use their, uh, their student login because it doesn't really have any information about them that's discernible and nobody else has that same unique identifier. Um, give them a password and then they can log in. So I created a class. Once you create a, pro a program, you can actually give them a partially made program that they can work with. The only issue is I'm finding right now is I've had it for three days uh, in review and Sphero, or not Sphero, um, Lightning Labs run by another company, it doesn't really matter, but they haven't approved the programs yet, so I couldn't actually give them the students right away. I think that's going to get sped up. This is still a very new, I think it was released in June, so it's, it's quite a new build for them. It's, everything's a little different. There's projects you can go through and find for kids, but at this point, students do need to log in on a Chromebook to be able to use the program. If you're on an iPad, they can skip the logging in, and they can just work on the iPad, but to do it on a Chromebook, they do need to log in, so at that point, I would suggest, especially with young kids, maybe have have logins built for them, and then they can log in quickly with that, and then they can go to choose their own program. Uh, when they click on program, it says all programs, which are the ones that are in the kind of environment that they're building right now, that Sphero's building. And then there's my programs, which are the ones that you personally have built. When you log out on that device, those programs are living in the cloud. So if you log in on a different device another time, the students do, their programs are still available to them, so there is an advantage in that. Um, so that's kind of handy for them, but you can't have them just go on an iPad and do it without logging in, and they can still access the programs. Makes sense so far, yeah. Okay, um, so I'm gonna show you a program now. So my question would be, what shape will Spiro make here? Uh, it's a bit blurry. <laughs> Little. So set color, roll, two seconds, 45 speed, zero degrees. Delay one second. Roll, two seconds, 45 degrees, 90 degree angle. That's the, that's the heading. Delay, roll, two seconds, 45 degrees, 180 degree angle. 
Delay, roll, two seconds, 45 degrees, 270 degree. Square, yeah. So <coughs> building a square, pretty basic, but um, the only thing you'll notice is in tickle, it goes by 90 degrees. So each time you tell it to turn 90 degrees, and so that was something we saw as a disadvantage until Megan found, this where it is, right here. So you can have it set color, uh, we're gonna loop four times, roll for one second, 80 speed, 90 degree angle, delay one second, reset aim. So if you use the reset aim block, then it's 90 degrees each time. So we can bring it down to that, that more primary level. Um, at this point, what I think would be good for people to do, partnering up if you don't mind just for physical space, I think we should maybe start by just having you build a square and then have everyone have success with that and then we'll kind of move on from there. But if you want to grab a sphero physically and do it, this isn't a sit for two hours workshop because it, you don't get anything out of it. So if you want to grab a sphero of bars that's charged or use one that you brought, and let's dive in and see if we can make it do a square. Try to change the three variables and see what happens. Okay, someone's connected to this one. It's blue. No? Well, when someone starts running the code, I'll just put on. Okay, I have two more zeros here. These are the uh, older version, but it works exactly the same with Lightning Lab if you want to play with it. The older one. This is 2.0. Yeah. It, this is Those are the only ones that use the camera. Oh, oh, you want to spark plus, right? Yeah. Here, I'll grab you one. Oh, there you go. Only I just did it in the I did it in the loop. And so 
I give her pizza and 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 I give
So please get up. We, if I could have, I would have taken the tables and chairs right out because they're really not, we don't want you sitting. Hello. Okay. Yes, the Okay, so there you go. Okay, so I told you you're you're like Oh, this is for twelve. That's why it's so annoying. Why is it so annoying? Yeah, so maybe get you for now. Um four point. Okay. And so the reason I'm starting, what, the reason for this is from what material you have to school that you were given, and, that, and there's different types. So, yeah, and if it's got a blue band around it, it's different if it has a white band around it. Merry Christmas, then you're doing a lot of things. It's two hours. Come on over here. And then you need something to go in the trunk. That's right. Maybe it could be inside. Yeah. Here's a meter stick. So your first, your first job is to put it on the floor first. Yeah, otherwise it will be And all we've done is added tools. So if you use that, we've added, I think, this blue bar here, which is still on its own, so we have to try it. And then we've added one of these in the lane. That's how we do it. Okay. Megan, where was we set heading? Oh, my I was going to, but I'm like, I'll be Yes. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just from what I've seen, I guess. Or, so, you know, that's that we have, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. So and eventually. Can you do half second? Yeah. Well, maybe if we just start over. So there it is. How's it going? Good. Do you guys want a measuring tape? Eventually. I'm just trying to figure out the number. Oh, which, which one? Ask away. Oh, okay. That's okay. It took me a while to get the resume. I thought I'd rather just get your iPad that I wanted to put lightly on. So I put it on my phone, but it took a while. Um, and see, so there's so much you can do with this. So you go to the controls. This is your real statement. So all of them mean something and mean something. Okay. You have the lasers on your own. You can see the lasers. So for now, you're heading plus 90. Heading plus 90. Like each time if you add your baby to the head, you want to continue to try and subtract it as well. Let's try that. Do you know about the answer? Yeah, so you can add it to the head. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. I've already been said it. These are settings. Oh, yeah. I learned that when you do that, it's a little bit more than that. 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 It's a little bit more
Get the corner, piece of tape, piece of tape, piece of tape. You use a lot less tape, there's a lot less waste, and you're still getting all the same understanding. They're seeing that the sphero started or finished at the same spot. We have more spheros over here if anyone's short of a sphero or needs one. There's dye? Okay, so we do have some over here. Yeah. We might be losing track of which one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. That was the same yes. Yeah, I'm going to get 
You can see the stream here, that's the, what's being broadcast, nice and clear. Beautiful, yeah, really clear. Yeah, and it'll, it'll save a copy of the whole thing at the remote end, or I can download after. Awesome. That's impressive. Yes, of course. We did a triangle. We did a triangle. It was good. But we want to make sense of that. All right, and then go around. So, a pure in reality, you don't have to do that. So that you can cheat by doing a five degree turn or even a ten degree turn. No, I don't know. Oh, it's doing it in a more common way. Otherwise, it's painful. Like doing it, doing it in scratch and pulling. Yeah, I hope that first time. But when you do it, if you do the um, in ten degrees, then it goes to so where I would start with that with the kids here, yeah. and where I start with the children with that, I always start with that scratch first, scratch coding on the online, and start there, and then take that and apply it to the real world so that they can see a real world So after you've done this, if you've done the scratch turn to eight degrees, then when you're trying to do the circle, it makes much more sense. And you grade five. Okay, so then what you can start to work on there, what I would suggest is have them code a rectangle. Talk about the areas of rectangle. You have tiles. You know it's connected. So you talk about the tiles and say, well, you know, look at the area. Let's make different rectangles with different areas. Have this. That's great. What if you coded a triangle to go inside? You can make a triangle that's exactly half of the size of the rectangle. So what the kids are going to do is, well, how do you do that? So they're going to get it done. You say, it's just too bad to figure out the area of the triangle. And they'll be like, yeah. Right. So if you don't cut them, they don't figure out the area of the triangle. They'll figure out just by what they've done. Because first they'll say, well, it's kind of a job. Yeah. Well, they say, if you measure the rectangle in here, so they'll tell you how to figure out the area of triangle simply by cleaning it. Yeah, right. Try it. Right? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah. And then you can turn the lab over into the ball and the just the arrows. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh,
just alternately the same. There's something that says the same thing. That would be a loop. That's a loop. That's a loop. And then roll. Yeah, the circle. Yeah, well, yeah, it will work. Did you find that? Yeah. That's not a theory. I don't know where. Okay, so. Is that a two point zero or is that a Okay, so yeah, um, maybe now try to update it. Yeah, update it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, See, mine's not mine. Yeah, I'm charging over here. Um, I do have a couple of colors. Flashing these lovely colors. Sorry. Double tap. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's... Okay. All right, if I could just gather one around again, if you want to hold off for just a second. <laughs> so the reset in block is in the very first um, kind of palette. Just using the word palette, that's what Scratch uses for the different um, areas that you can go get blocks from. So in the actions palette, you have to scroll all the way to the end, uh, and that's where you find set heading. So if you want to make it more primary friendly, I would suggest, I would suggest using that each time. Uh, so that the heading resets to zero and they're not having to figure all the math out. Quite honestly, in grade three, I'm probably just going to teach them the different degrees and let them do that, because then they'll be ready for it in older grades. Um, but it depends a lot on your grade, too. Um, so here I made a triangle. Uh, many of you have experimented with this. The only reason I put 240 first was because I wanted to turn in that direction first. So you can have the kid, you can have them draw or create a triangle going in a different direction simply by what degrees they put up. It doesn't take them that long to figure this stuff out once they start playing with it. It really doesn't. Um, although I have definitely not used to looking the gardens yet. So. Um, how, can, how does a loop help? Can you make a square with a loop? So this is a loop for a triangle. So what I've done here, uh, I've gone in and I've found headings. Oh, that was nice. Uh, and I can't show you Lightning Lab on here. My Chromebook would not connect, so unfortunately, I can't. I can't screen share Lightning Lab. But you'll find heading under. Thank you so much. Uh, you'll find the heading under sensors, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you want to go to op, not operators, comparators. You want to no, it is operators. You want to go to operators and find the plus sign. So it's an add, and you're going to drop the heading into the add. So first, you put the Add in. <coughs> so here in roll, when we get to the last circle, which would normally be heading, you're going to drop in an operator add. Once you've dropped that block in, then you go to sensors and you grab the heading and drop it in as well. And it adds on to whatever the heading is at the start of the program. So if the heading at the start of the program is zero, and it adds 120 each time, it's going to make a triangle. If it's the heading plus 90, it's going to make a square. So uh, just try this now to make a square if you want, or you can make a triangle as well. Uh, just give it a try so you get a, ch a chance to just see how those work. And then experiment with it and change those and see what else it comes up with. Maybe not grade two at the beginning of the year, but maybe by the end of the year, you slip into that a bit more. It's just starting to make use of more of those blocks. I'll just show you one more thing before we jump back in. Um, wow. Here's an if-then block. <laughs> Sorry. You'd be good. Here's an if-then block I've, I've dropped in. So if speed is less than 5, then set color to red. 
So if then statements, which really in Tickle there wasn't a lot of ways to <coughs> use those unfortunately before, like it was always something that was there but they hadn't really expanded, it works in Lightning Lab, which is kind of neat. So I would suggest also playing with that. So here, this is a comparator. Uh, there beside the, I, I, I don't remember all the terminology for Lightning Lab, I apologize. For the operators. Operators, thank you. These are just new words for me. Okay, so, oh, it's right here. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> comparators is right beside operators. They're kind of the same thing, oh, right? Okay. It's just greater than, less than, equal to, not equal to. It all ties back into actual coding language and coding commands and things that are normal in code, right? So, but here, they're just getting the chance to try these different things. And I would definitely let students have the chance to try this if they're ready for it. Throwing this into their code allows the colors to change. And then that leads to, can I create a pattern? Can they create a pattern that changes as they go along? So they're moving a certain distance, and then the color changes. Then you move a slightly smaller distance, then the color changes a smaller distance. We're adding all these different attributes to the pattern, and they're doing it all in physical space. There's just a lot of ways you can tie it in. So, I'm talking a lot there, I'm sorry, but just play with some of those things now, and if you're having trouble, just throw up your hand and we'll check out what you're doing. Thank you. Yes. So, heading at the beginning, your heading is uh, probably zero degrees, right? So, you're heading off. So, this is what I always tell the kids, like it's the it's back side or it's bottom or whatever it's but it's the blue light when you orientate it. So once you orientate it, if it heads straight forward, that's zero degrees. And everything else is a circle. So if it heads off at 120 degrees, or heads off at 270 degrees, that's two different directions, right? Left or right, depending on where it starts. So Heading is, is huge to which direction the sphere will move in. And then if you put in heading, wherever the heading starts, at here it's starting at zero degrees, so it's set heading to zero to begin. So if I set the heading to zero, and then it's going to move whatever the distance was I told it to roll, but then it's going to add on to that initial heading. What did I say? And then turn. But if I put a state of minus 120, it will turn the opposite way. It will it'll turn, make a triangle, but so, going in the opposite okay, direction. Okay, so it's at least from here. To the left, so rather than the right. It's shining not got it's out just so many colors. It's shining like that. that. It's so it's heading here, actually, whatever. That's different. Then we need it to go kind of like that. So it doesn't You can just roll it forward, but once you want to start eventually, then you can roll it well, they're, yeah. they're more accurate. So it will default to zero if you don't tell anything. Uh, so like that works. We didn't have to add one until things are like the one. That is zero. Yeah, I think it's a combination there. Yeah, so what I've done is I've added in the i so, so it could be speed. If speed is going to go in that direction. It could be location, velocity, orientation, there's just accelerometer, gyroscope. I'd be playing Yes, so it's one does that. So did you see that? It was placed in that way. So the first thing, so it's saying in this box, this is this is four chains, whatever number this is Now, it can be a set number, or I can create, this is basically create a set number. Okay, so we did it. I found the Yeah, we did it. We got out that It is good So if you say one direction 90 degrees, yeah, go in direction 90 degrees, go in Let's go with it. So, once it's in blue, it's in zero. Once you're in blue, it's in blue. 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 It
Reminds me of the. Did you ever do Lego? Yes. It's like that, but yeah. instead of on the screen, yeah. it's in real real space. Yeah, it's very cool. So 
And as we get this so we can share with students, they could run the code and they could copy it, run it, and find out why it's not working. So I'm trying to create a pattern that repeats. I do it twice. Another way to do this is, is to not loop it and then say it's a pattern and then hopefully they'll say, no, why not? Because it doesn't repeat. Okay. So my pattern repeats, but and it's supposed to move each time, but it doesn't. I don't have speed on the fourth roll, that's correct. So if there's nothing happening on the fourth roll, and that's what's creating the problem. So it's supposed to go forward, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, and backwards. But it doesn't go forwards because I didn't, or sorry, it doesn't move because I didn't give it a speed. Yes. So just playing with those different variables, and then the sounds it makes, it repeats the sound. So we're repeating sound, we're repeating color, we're repeating um, moving forward or backwards. So you can see all the different attributes. So there's another way to teach patterning, because kids always have trouble with attributes and including enough attributes. If they physically code it, they will include all the attributes when they have to explain it, because they've done them all. They, it really means something, rather than position, color, like when you're just drawing on a piece of paper, it's a whole different level of patterning. And it, all the grade one, all the way through, right? Um, if I was grade seven, eight, I'd probably get those if-then statements and having getting those to tie into the pattern as well, so that you're you're creating a kind of third or tertiary level to how the pattern's working. Um, so debugging is great for the kids. Give them a program that doesn't quite work, and then let them figure out what's not working in the program. Have them replicate it, right? And and the and this works in Tickle as well. I'm, I'm showing Lightning Lab, but I mean obviously you can use this in Tickle as well, and then let them figure out what's not working. Um, we're going to go back to trying things in a second, but just how does this connect to measurable student learning? Because I know if you go back to school and you would like to convince your principal why it would be a great idea to have more spheros so that you can get more of the kids using them. If you only have two, there's a lot of different ways you want to tie it in. Uh, right now, I've heard that math is a, a push in our board. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys have noticed. Um, so this is literally word for word out of the curriculum. So the mathematical processes, and, and so they're all interconnected. And right away, problem solving and communicating have strong links to all other processes. So if I go back, um, and I pulled these from something I did with Scratch. So I didn't even, I didn't even change these to, to talk about Sphero specifically. So this is just coding in general. So working through solutions and problem solving with an understanding of how various code affects their sprite. So even tonight, as you tried to do things and things didn't work, you went back, you changed a line of code, you changed the variables, you changed something, and you were able to see it, you problem solved through, you worked in a group. No one here was working by themselves that I'm aware of. Were you? Little-ish. I loved you, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but in class, like the whole, the whole way we model this is we have the students working in small groups, everyone has a role, we switch those roles, uh, co-pilot, pilot, problem solving together. So reasoning and proving, well, you reason through why the code might work, I don't even know what I wrote here, and then instant feedback when you actually try to run your code. Did it work, did it work? So go back, check it, and proving at the end is they videotape it, they, they send it to you through Google Drive, they're done, they've done their project. Reflecting, 
Uh, each time they've successfully completed something and you have them sit down and, and write about, okay, what worked? What did I have to iterate? Uh, what did I, what really, really made the difference? Or what was the single most important thing I learned from doing this program? Let, to find the highlights. Selecting tools, computational strategies. Um, well, computational thinking is literally, not figurative, it's literally what we're doing here. So, I mean, that ties in really well. But again, being able to select from the different palettes or the different choices and pull things into the program, starting to become more efficient in how they do things, using a loop, all those different things allows those students to start to select the best tools and make their code more efficient, and that ties right in as well. Uh, connecting, they still connect something they did in another program. So if they did a loop with a square and they figured out heading, they're going to apply that to the triangle. They're just naturally going to start to do that. They'll take all the skills from building a triangle and a square and apply it when they start doing their patterning. It all links together and they build their repertoire of what they can do with coding. Um, representing, <laughs> it literally represents what they've done. Everything they do is instantly represented, right? It's not even on paper. And then communicating. So having them do a video interview, having them uh, do it and explain everything, explaining what they did and drawing it out, or screencasting it. Have them do a screencast. Do it on Android. Use Screencast-O-Matic. Have them record their voices while they set up their program and then explain what happened, and they can video on top of that and put it all together for you. There's just so many different ways you can share that. If it's an older grade, have them build a Google site. Have them throw both videos up, the video of how they built the code and the video of what actually happened. Um, just lots of ways to tie it back in. I would strongly suggest going and putting that pitch forward because there's so many ways it ties into math. Um, I just think that there's a lot of valid uses. Any thoughts or? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, uh, and then these are just some different activities. So this is what we talked about earlier. Uh, set the sphere to travel for five seconds at various speeds. How do you measure how far Spiro actually moved to each speed percentage? Um, you know, just an easy place. You can tie it into data management. They can they could do this with four different Spiros, probably different results too, especially with uh, Tickle. So you can try that. Um, these are just basic things. So measurement and geometry, 2D shapes, uh, perimeter and area. So with those tiles, you can start to pull that in. You can do it by actual measurement or in younger grades, the tiles are your tool that you measure by. Um, have groups try to trade a shape that would be difficult for other groups to navigate with Sphero. So then the challenge, they have to be able to, to code to go around the shape, but try to make it as challenging as possible for the other groups to do. Measure the perimeter, and then, so there's just lots of different things happening when they do that. Uh, taking it to language, write a fictional story. Um, I don't know why that picture's there, but that's a chassis for something else we built. But have them write the tale of Sphero, so then they can record the story, you can green screen it and have a background going in the background and put it on table and have like different backgrounds changing and the Sphero can, you can code it through. Uh, my daughter did these for me. Um, get a cup, create a little character, grade two, wheelhouse, there you go. And uh, you throw those on top and you have them move in, have them dance together. Oh, it's nice to see you, it's nice to see you too. And then have them kind of dance together. And, and, and there's so much you can do or have the characters like slowly walk off stage, other ones chasing and bumping into them. like. Talk about bullying, have that pulled in. There's just so many different ways you can tie this together. Um, procedural writing, have a screenshot of the code they've made, then have them sit down, and I would do it in Google Docs, like with the picture, but you could also just have them share the screenshot with you and then they can write out each step, what it meant, what the code means, tell them to explain it to someone who's never coded before, you're letting them tell someone else how to go about doing it. Sphero music, so if they compose music with, um, well, there's lots of ways, soundtrack or, um, what's the one I was on? The, what's the one where the characters come up and they go, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Incredibox! <laughs> so, here, should I, do you guys have a quick Oh, it's very fun. <laughs> so, Incredibox. Um, Ready to go off topic. This is this one. So you can have the kids jump into this, and create music, and then they create a dancing composition for the Spiro based on oh, the music nice they've cool. created. So again, it's just playing with different possibilities. Thanks a lot, Google. Okay, Incredibox. We'll skip the intro. Whoa, that's 
Okay, sorry, it's just loading. We have speakers. We have some more speakers. So just there's another option. Just lots of ways you can tie it in. Um, so what I would say is in the last little bit there, if you want to just kind of try to pull in a, a heading plus degrees or you know try to play with the operators or an if-then statement so you can get it to change color by doing something, take a, a chance right now. We'll, we'll be done at quarter six, I promise, so in about 20 minutes. But, and you can stay longer, but if you just want to take that time to try and pull in some of those um, some of those other blocks you haven't used yet, that way if you're running into trouble, we can troubleshoot your code and see what we can do for you. Um, does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Cool. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
if I'm in the middle of teaching a class, but at break time and stuff, I do check my phone and I'm always happy to help. So if you, I'm, and I'm sure Megan feels the same way. Sorry, yeah. Megan. Yeah, for and, sure. And uh, those for are sure. our Twitter handles right there. So, you know, feel free to reach out and, and touch base there. That's kind of the easiest way. Actually, we'd love to hear how it goes. Some people have some great ideas. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like we've covered everything that we could reasonably cover in the time. Uh, if you have any questions, again, you want to stick around. But thank you very much for coming.